Wish for something good, my dear. Yes, I do. Hurrah! Hallelujah! G'day, folks, and welcome back. Today, Ira and I, we're coming at you from the Royal Botanic Garden here in Cranbourne. This is just a beautiful place, many hectares of land covering the native Australian way of plants and fauna. Little garden layout, so we're going to have a look at that. They've got a beautiful cafe here, delicious scones and some food. So we're going to have a little look in there after. And of course they've got a nice little gift shop. So if you're here to having a visit, I highly recommend you come down. It's about 45 kilometres southeast of Melbourne. So that's not too far away. And you can jump on the freeway and, and pretty much come all the way down. So that's a great day out here. That's a good way to spend a nice day. Relax. Lots of nature, lots of birds, lots of uh, different types of flowers and plants and Australian fauna. So we're going to go and take a look in the Botanic Garden here. Come on, let's go and check it out. Yeah, so they've got a gift shop here and cafe. So we'll have a little quick look in there and then we're going to head on out and have a look at the gardens. Oh, there's the savories. What time do you stay open till? Uh, so we're open until four. The kitchen is closed. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can get a good look out here at the cafe. Out under the gardens. Got some good food here. All oh, looks pretty good. Look at that delicious peach pie. Maybe after the walk, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, All right, nice. let's go and have a look the gardens. So here we are, now we're entering the gardens. So it's a pretty big place. This was made in about the 1970s. And uh, yeah, mostly for the Australian fauna, landscape, gardens, etc. Yeah, so if you can either walk or if you like, you can take this little shuttle bus and it takes you around the gardens here. There's a path. So there's a big path and they just drive all the way around. And you can have a look or get on and get off wherever you like. I think it's about six or seven bucks to jump on. But that's another good option, folks. Another good option. Yeah, so this is uh, the water saving garden here, folks, the dry terrace. Now they say Australia is the driest inhabitant continent of the planet, yet Australians are among the highest users of water in the world. So this terrace is a semi-arid garden featuring native plants that once established, they required little or no watering other than rainfall to flourish. So yeah. So when you're in a, a continent like Australia, folks, and it is pretty dry. These are, are typically a good way to put in the garden and you'll see most of these types in the gardens uh, of the Australian uh, garden place around the home. So yeah, it's a good way to save water and let nature take its course and look after its own. And so of course, that's obviously a huge watering can. 
<laughs> but yeah, our watering can comes from the sky. That's the best way. Nature's own water. All right, just gorgeous. It's like a bike with little red bells on it for the flowers. Gorgeous, beautiful for taking a few photos as well. Just what I was up to. But yeah, it's the way you can lay the garden. The old bottle brush there, the birds love that. They come and feed off of that as well. But just, yeah, just different ways to outlay and landscape your garden. Yeah, so when they've got the, uh, the water running, of course the water's out of the big dam down there, but when the water's running down there, down the rocks, it comes down this architecture here, over the laid pavers, and of course it's all like filled with water. So you can probably get, I don't know, maybe an inch of water there. And it's a good, good place for, on the weekend when the weather's warm, the kids come with their families and they bring their picnics. They have a walk around the, and you know, the kids can play in here. Sometimes the adults do too. But yeah, it's just spectacular when it's just all running all the way down there. So yeah, unfortunately it's not on today, but normally it is, normally it is. All right, let's go and check out some more. Yeah, so here we've got uh, a few garden styles and they're rep represented by like the, a heritage garden, a 1950s garden, a bush garden, an informal style polarized in the 60s and 70s. Just a low maintenance contemporary courtyard out there. We'll have a look at that. So yeah, as you can see different different types of landscapes and gardens, what they'll do in time. But everything changes over time, doesn't it folks? Whether you you know how you landscape. And then you sort of come on to another one where you've got the bushes in front. So this sort of represents the front door of the house. And then you've got your uh, your front hedge with the gate. And you just sort of walk in. So yeah, you get to see a good a few different types and you know you got the bushland backyard, contemporary backyard. You know, and, and as what a lot of people today got the boards beautiful for their backyards, easy instead of back in the other times where you could be a little bit more rugged. You have the path going through the garden, through the backyard. Has a different old style. So yeah, you could have it like that. But uh, yeah, plenty of different, plenty of different uh, suggestions. Yes, yeah, so if you're looking to um, build a garden or landscape your, your house, so you got, you know, around your garden good idea come up get some ideas from here and uh, it'll take it from there it's just a nice place and you can enjoy the day as well bit of research research relaxing <laughs> all right let's continue see what else is through the doorway yes, this is a bit of the kids backyard garden as we're searching for iron we'll just take a little peek there you got some like seats there, a bit of a table they can draw on if they want for the chalk or anything. You put some boards up there. You know, these are like simple gardens, folks. Which you can have, which are all easy to do. You got this structure. And then you can just come all the way and then come out of it. <laughs> so that's pretty good, bit of fun for the kids. Get up on the walk path up here. Look at that, they've even got a tunnel up the end. They can play, so it's a good play area. You know, kids only need simple things. Simple things are often the best in the backyard. Just gotta keep them busy, let them enjoy themselves. They can play around. Yeah, just a few more ideas for the Aussie backyard. Yeah, so in the middle of the gardens here, you got the big pond, the big lake. Got a little bit of a waterfall, so we'll check that on the way around. That's another good spot. They got the, oh, by the way, they got these seedings here. Because usually, usually on the weekend they get a, quite a few people here, so uh, yeah, beautiful place to be. Gets filled up, 
and uh, as I said people come here there's a beautiful lawn up the back there we'll check that out on the way through and uh, yeah people bring their picnics and just enjoy enjoy the day here so we'll see a little bit a bit more of that when we go around Yeah, so you get all these layers of bushes, natives, like that's the banks here. And uh, yeah, sure, it shows you how it all grows, what it looks like. So if you're looking to uh, put your garden in, it gives you an idea of, yeah, what the plants look like or the, the bushes. So it's, uh, that's pretty well laid out here. So if you're looking for something a little bit different, have a look at these. Quite interesting. Like little bells or all over the tree. There we are. That's the name of it. I can't quite pronounce it. But yeah, big just a beautiful green bush that covers all those. I'm sure the birds would love them or you know, could even make something out of those. Quite quite good, quite good. You got the beautiful yellow wattle. Just gorgeous, gorgeous. So you got the fuchsia, gramilia. Just beautiful. Definitely worth taking some photos off. Very nice, very nice. You get that light that hits them quite nice. Even in this way, you get a little bit of bokeh. Yeah. So Ira's getting some beautiful shots. I've got my Sony with the 90 macro on. That's going to get some nice shots here too. Yeah, just birds everywhere, hear them chirping. Sounds of nature, gorgeous. Yeah, so we're up here and we're a bit of a viewpoint now, Ira. Yeah. So uh, a beautiful place though. Yeah, it's a beautiful place, but what uh, we found this, what we found here, we found a broken tree. Ah, I think the wind, we had really strong winds about two nights ago yeah and it's it's just broken so just one half of tree just laying on there yeah i think this is a type of eucalyptus so yeah. these these trunks and branches can get really really big really heavy so you've got to be careful definitely you don't want these planted close to your house but in the bush they're good but uh yeah strong winds Let's pull this one down. Just so sorry, this tree looks so strong and fresh and so young leaves yeah, here. Yeah, very healthy tree it was. But still, that's all a part of nature, my dear. That's all a part of nature and nature's a funny thing. It does what it wants. But it always lives on and rejuvenates, so. But let's go and have a little look at the scenery, let's the lookout, go. and uh, we'll check that out. Come on. We're at the viewpoint, we're coming up to it. It's fantastic, you can see a little bit of the waterfall over here. And it's even better because the sun is behind the cloud. So it's a great point to look at here folks. And as you see over there, you'll see the waterfall just trickling. Get the sounds of the water movement. Just peaceful here. Yeah, so we've got some paperback trees here. Look at that, it's just, just like paper. So you find these. These generally you can find definitely down by the, uh, by the sea and down by the seaside water. So yeah, interesting, interesting tree. I'll give you a little close up look. Come on. Yeah, so that's the paper bark. So it's just, that's just like paper. Just comes off. It's a pretty cool tree. 
Yeah, so just in case any anyone jumps in the water, they need to be rescued. A little donut there to chuck on them, but have a look at the scenery. It's just beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah, just peaceful, beautiful gardens, good landscape. Uh, so here we are now coming to the weird and wonderful garden. So, look at that, just plenty of rocks being built. It's all about landscaping. Beautiful. You could do this in any backyard, anywhere around the house. Have a look at this tree. Look how fat it is at the bottom. A little bit like a milk bottle with arms. It's kind of cool. But yeah, definitely a weird and wonderful garden. Instead, it gives you some good ideas. Got your rock formations, so you can use your big and your small and just space out, angled. It's very good. So here we've got some type of palm. I'm not sure, folks. Drop a comment if you know. But it sort of grows this type of... Well, it's like a fruit or something. It's like, since it's all been dropping, the birds must... And oh, there's, there's a bit, have a look at that. What does it feel like? Very hard. I even can't, uh, oh, I took it. <laughs> Do you think the birds eat that? Yeah, it's soft inside. Soft inside, so it yeah. must be some type of fruit or... Yeah, it looks like bees. So there's the waterfall just trickling over the edge. But another good view from up here. There says the waterfall. So you can hear it. I thought they were olive. I'm not sure. The leaves don't look like it. I'm not sure too, but maybe we can find some. There might be a name somewhere. This is a Pitosporum. A witch? Pitosporum. I don't know what it is. Uh, so there's the name of it, Weeping Petostrum. Got these other little shrubs here, gorgeous little yellows on the end. Plenty of uh, lovely shrubs and plants in the native variety. So yeah, that's what we use a lot of here in Australia. Because we're such a, it's a, such a dry country, they sort of, you don't really have to water them. Once they're established, they uh, they tend to look after themselves. Oh, oh so we're here at what what's this Gibson? Gibson Hill. Gibson Hill Point. So this is supposed to be the highest point here in the botanic gardens here in Cranbourne. So hopefully we'll get a good a good spot. So we're just about up the top, okay. and we'll have a look. This is a magical place. We can something wish here about future, about our dreams. Magic. Ah, so looks magical, Ira saying. Hurrah! Hallelujah! <laughs> so, what a... Not a bad vantage point here. Look at this. Extend that out a bit. We're high above it all, so there, you got that sort of like, like the desert, that's the red centre there, that's what that represents, but look at that view, it's pretty good. So it's a good viewpoint up here, Ira. Yeah, absolutely, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I like it, magical place. Magical, don't forget Gibson. Gibson Hill. Gibson Hill Point. You come here, come up to, there's two spots here. This one here, which is probably the highest point, and the point over there where we were before, where we looked down and saw the waterfall straight across. And magical circle for your wishes. Come and wish on the magical circle. Who knows, it might come true. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. If you believe, all will happen.
of course. Always must believe, folks. Always must believe. But yeah, it's a big place. And we're going to continue over to the other side now, where there's a beautiful big lawn section where you can come, enjoy, relax, have a picnic, let the kids play. So we're going to go over and check that out. Are you ready? Yeah, of course. All right. Come, come on. on. Let's go. Just at the end of autumn, still got a little bit of colour in the trees. Grab a seat if you want down there for a rest. Just another gorgeous spot here. Yeah, so this is still part of the journey, the paths. You're on paths all the time and you've got these sections here. So if you want to pull up a chair. Like Ira, she's just taking a rest. Good to relax a bit, my dear. Yeah, but a little bit chilly because it's iron. A bit iron chair, that's all right. But you can just come here and relax and enjoy. Look at that view. Beautiful view, folks. You're in like your own little personal garden here. And there's a few of those. There's a few of those. Yeah, so you look over that lake where we just were. So that was the, the little rotunda where you were. So there's a few of these sections. Quite good. You've got some... Uh, you got some more seats and tables up there. Beautiful little gardens they plant around. Since we are in the botanic garden here in Cranbourne. So there's all little sections, which is quite good. So yeah, families will they'll come and they'll sit up on the steps or sit there and just enjoy the day. We've got another kiosk over here where you can stop in and grab some food. It's not open today because we're just about at the end of the day when it's closing time. But uh, that's a good spot. You've got some tables and chairs. You can come up here. And of course, you can take the perfect seat with the perfect view. Here's the lawn section. Got a beautiful, beautiful big stretch of lawn. Always well manicured. Soft and people just lay their blanket out here. And uh, yeah, and just relax, enjoy it all here. Have a picnic. Hello, Mr. Bird. Hello. Yeah, so another bit of an overview. That's where we are here in the park. So we've got a lot of different sections you can jump in and have a look. That's pretty good here. Plenty of parking, accessible for wheelchair if you need. Uh, so we're going on the eucalyptus walk now. You smell a bit of that beautiful scent in the air. I think. Yeah, so many beautiful parts and sections around here. Good walkways. So you'll have no trouble. You just enjoy your day. And the eucalyptus walk, gum trees. Koalas actually, it's their favourite meal, the eucalyptus. But I haven't seen any here yet today. But it's a good walk. Good for good for everyone to get out, Ira. Yeah, very good walk. Yeah. And of course, a lot of beautiful photos. Of course, that's important. Always bring your camera, folks, and you'll catch some beautiful, beautiful photos of whatever that may be you like. Whether it be the wildlife, the little birds, you've got to be quick for them. They sort of scoot round pretty quick. Yes, if you're wanting a few more things to do in Melbourne or around Melbourne, I'll chuck a, a link up there. You can hit that and have a look and see what other things you can do. Got a, quite a few videos there, so check those out. Well, I've got you, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. If you like what you see, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're still watching, thanks very much. Appreciate that. We're nearly done. 
we're nearly to the exit but uh, yeah just gonna enjoy the walk All right, folks, before we sign off, we've just come over to Trig Point. This is the piece of resistance of the views here. So if you just come out of the Cranbourne Botanic Garden, just head over. Oh, look, wallaby. Uh, that's Australia, folks. You see kangaroos or the wallabies out there in nature. But this is the piece of resistance, the view that you want to come and see. So it's just, you just set out probably 50 metres from uh, the Cranbourne Botanic Gardens, as I was saying. And uh, check this out. Whew. Ira's up there. This is the view. I'm not going to just share it just now. I'm going to wait until we get up there and check it out. Come on. So, what do you think of the view? Boy, I like it. It's so beautiful. Should we? Oh, should look, we? Look, and this. What is it? What? Hang on, my dear. Oh, look. Point, trick point, look out. And you can see where is. Just, we will first, my dear. Let's show everyone the view. Look at this up in the top of the trees look at this review so if anyone knows that's the Cranbourne racetrack and just there is the Cranbourne Botanic Gardens where we were so it's just a fantastic the Sun isn't too far off setting so we're getting a little bit of a sunset coming but the view is Fantastic. Pekinum, there. 19 kilometers from this Pekinum. And you can see different. Ah, areas. so we've got to go that way home. North, west, east, south. So you can see all the directions. Nary Warren, Danny Long, 17 kilometers. Melbourne CBD, 45 kilometers. You go to the Port Phillip Bay, the Yu Yangs, that's a really good place to go to. We haven't been there yet. That's about 77 kilometres. Yeah, so how was that? That's the Trig Hill. Trig Hill? I'm not sure. Trig Hill, I mean. Trig Point. Look at tower that we're up the top of. We thought we'd just have to show you that. So if you come down here to the Cranberry Botanic Gardens, definitely make your way over here. I thought over in the gardens it was the highest point, but yeah, we saw this on the way out. Glad we did because that is some, some view. Look at that. Magnificent. All right, pumpkin. Now it's time to sign out. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that's the end of our adventure here and our tour around the Cranbourne Botanic Gardens here. A wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed it. Got a little bit of a glimpse to see a little bit of our native species here in Australia. It was just fantastic, Ira. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I can't cut this out. It was just too hilarious. All right, folks. Thanks for hanging around. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Don't forget, as I said before, hit that subscribe button. It always helps. And uh, ring that bell so you know when we drop another video and you'll get notified. Anyway, drop a comment if you want. Tell us what you thought of today's adventure around the gardens. But until next time, folks. Ciao for now. Ciao for now. And we'll see you in the next vid.